Swing Fire is interesting and very effective in defensive gameplay. It can launch two missiles at an arc, which may offer some advantages or disadvantages, depending on situation. In this video, I will tell you about those situations and show you how Swing Fire's features can be used in battles to your benefit. This missile carrier is located in British Tech Tree at 7.3 battle rating. Approximately at this rating, tank's armor starts to be less useful thanks to advanced weaponry able to penetrate very thick armor plates. One of the examples of such weaponry is on top of the swing fire. Anti-tank guided missiles have a heat warhead that is able to penetrate over 500 mm, which can be translated as almost every vehicle you will see in battles. Almost, because in theory, when up to it, you can meet tanks with composite or explosive reactive armor that could resist these ATGMs, but there are not that many of such vehicles at Swingfire's battle rating, and if you were unlucky to meet one of those, you would simply need to aim at weak spots. Against light vehicles that you will see quite often, ATGMs work even better. Overpressure created by explosion of warhead almost always destroys the tank instantly. But all these things I mentioned apply to most missile carriers, while the swing fire has a couple of not-so-usual features. One of them is that this vehicle has two missile launchers that reload independently from one another. Each launcher has its own seven missiles. Because of that, unlike the majority of tanks, the swing fire doesn't become defenseless for the duration of reload after firing just one of its ATGMs. Or if one missile fails to destroy the opponent, you can fire the second one immediately, which significantly reduces the possibility that your victim will be able to shoot back or run away. With Ace Crew, the reload is 10 seconds. So most of the time after dealing with one opponent, I had both missiles already available when I saw the next one. Another unusual feature is that this vehicle fires the missile upwards, and only then they start adjusting their trajectory towards the crosshair, which might save your life or send you to hangar, depending on situation. When there was a rock between me and enemy, I was able to shoot him, while the poor guy was looking at the same rock, unable to do anything, waiting for the end. But at the same time, it's way more difficult to hit opponents that get too close, since the missiles fly above them. In general, these two situations perfectly summarize the gameplay with this vehicle. Trying to stay behind cover, and trying to avoid situations where opponents would be able to get too close. The rest is just pressing the fire button and keeping the crosshairs on the enemy. Such gameplay is not very diverse, it has its own limitations. You cannot go forward and fight for capture points as effectively as other vehicles can. Most of the time I had to stay way behind my allies, controlling one direction that preferably has a good overview of as big part of a map as possible. It's more like waiting for an opponent to get in your traps, rather than going out there and actively hunting them. The downside of such gameplay is that, if opponents go to other directions that are not under your control, you might not meet anyone for the whole battle. Especially difficult are city maps with lots of buildings. There are not many wide open areas where you could have a good overview and it's much easier for opponents to drive unnoticed through many narrow streets and appear right next to you. When you do end up in such situation, where you have to shoot at short ranges, it is very helpful to use your surroundings to raise the back of the swing fire which will make missiles fly somewhat straight, making it much easier to hit nearby opponents. Additionally, you can aim below your target to make the missile descend sooner, but it's very hard to guess exactly how much below the opponent's tank you have to aim. So it's better to keep your distance in order to avoid such disadvantageous situations altogether. Swingfire's survivability is very low, 
there are only 3 crew members and armor is made of 10-12mm plates, which means that even high caliber machine guns can penetrate it. Nevertheless, because of mostly defensive gameplay, I was able to survive more often than I do when playing well protected vehicles. It's not easy to be destroyed if you keep your distance and only the gunner's optics sticks out above the cover. At the same time, try not to attract unnecessary attention, especially when planes are flying around. I don't recall a single match where I would be able to survive if the opponent's aircraft started to attack me. That's why, despite having a heavy machine gun, I almost never used it or it was a last resort weapon against planes when I knew that I'm already detected. Despite having almost no armor, this vehicle is not very mobile. It feels like an average medium tank. The maximum speed is 52 kph, but it's only reachable on roads or when going downhill. The reverse of 9 kph is also nothing special. Considering that I was staying behind allies and just like majority of missile carriers I had to be stationary to be able to fire ATGMs, the mobility never became an issue. On a good note, Swingfire has neutral steering, so the vehicle can maneuver or spin in place quite fast, which is important since you can fire the missiles only forward at around 90 degrees angle. In arcade, it becomes more difficult to play with this vehicle because opponents will see your name tag and expect missiles from your direction, so they will be shooting down your ATGMs with machine guns quite often, or if they are playing hull down and the distance is big enough, they might have enough time to hide behind a hill by the time your missile reaches them. Additionally, tanks will benefit from having penetration and ballistic indicator, while the Swingfire doesn't even have it in arcade. Furthermore, there is no way to hide from planes. They will see Swingfire's name and know that it can be easily destroyed. Being more mobile is the only noticeable thing how this missile carrier benefits from arcade game mode. Though considering that it has to keep some distance from opponents, it's not the most useful thing anyway. While all your opponents, in addition to mobility, also get faster turret rotation, penetration and ballistic indicator, so they become stronger while this vehicle remains the same. Watching Swingfire's missiles flying towards opponents was satisfying, but I didn't feel contributing to team's victory. Because it has difficulties hitting targets at close range, I was staying way behind teammates and because of that wasn't able to impact the situation on capture points. The ability to shoot over obstacles is useful in defensive gameplay, when you find a good, suitable cover and stay here. If you have to move somewhere, missile's trajectory just makes it harder to hit opponents. Of course, two launchers are very helpful. Even if you miss one of ATGMs, you can adjust your aim and immediately launch another one, but that's a quick fix and not a solution. I would rate this vehicle 5 missile launchers out of 10. While the firepower of this vehicle is great, it penetrates almost all tanks anywhere and two missiles usually enough to destroy most of them, but you won't be able to use this firepower often because the vehicle forces you to stay away from the most congested areas.